I'm in a television studio. Right now, there's just one light on me. That's fairly unusual because very often in a television studio, there'll be many lights. In fact, there could be up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 15 lights. Sometimes we even have up to 30 lights in a television studio. The reason being so that we can give plenty of even light over the entire studio area so you can see what's happening. Now, when you're outside in the sunshine, very often it's like the situation that we had at the beginning with just one harsh light. So let's imagine that's the sunlight. Now, what that does, of course, is to cast a shadow on that side of my face. The right side of my face is brightly lit. The left side of my face has a shadow on it, a form shadow. It shows you the shape of my face. Also, if you look at the wall, you'll see a shadow there as well. I'm casting a shadow on the wall. That's a cast shadow. And form shadows and cast shadows help us to understand the shape of things. Have a look at this. You'll have no trouble at all in working out what these things are. They're obviously eggs. You can see a form shadow on the side of each egg, and you can see a cast shadow coming out to the side. And you know the shape of those three-dimensional objects. And of course, if the source of light changes from one position to another, the effect looks quite different to you. But you tend to build up a picture in your own mind of what the object is that you're looking at. You know, shadows can do something else as well. Not only can they tell us what the object looks like, but if we bring the lights back up again, if we bring all those lights back up again, shadows can also tell us where the sun or source of artificial light is coming from. Have a look at this picture. It's Cubipede. We went up there to record some segments for the Curiosity Show, as you know. Where do you think the light's coming from? Well, all of those objects in the foreground are in deep shadow. The light, which is the sun in this case, must be coming from behind. It's obviously a sunset shot. Now, here's another picture just outside Cubipede. We went out to record a segment, and our car broke down. And you can tell from the shadows on the ground, they're all pointing to the left, that the sun must have been out of the picture to the right. So shadows tell you where the light source is. Here's another one. Rob is actually videotaping a segment here. The crew gathered around. Look at the shadows on the ground. They're coming towards us. So where's the light? It's behind them. And here's a cartoon. This cartoon was drawn by Larry Pickering. And if you look at that, you can see the shadow of the railway station canopy is directly below. So where was the sun? The imaginary sun in that case, directly above the railway station. Well, when you're drawing pictures, why don't you see if you can include some shadows as well? Here's a man standing in front of a brick wall. Now, if we want to make it look a little bit more realistic, maybe we should add a shadow. Let's imagine the sun is over to the left, out of the picture, and fairly low, late afternoon. The shadow of his legs would be coming across in these positions here. I'm using a purple colour because very often shadows do look a dark purpley grey colour, don't they? And the shadow of his body will come over here towards the wall. Now, what will happen when the shadow hits the wall? Yes, you're quite right. The shadow then climbs straight up the wall in this position here. There's his head, the shadow of his head there, the shadow of the arm coming down here and back onto the ground, and the shadow of this arm coming up in that position there. So it looks a little bit more realistic because the man is now casting a shadow. Here's another picture. Do you remember this one? Some time ago, we showed how you could mix colours, and I made that picture using three felt pens, red, blue, and yellow, mixing all those colours. No shadows, though. Let's add some with this pencil. Let's imagine the sun is over to the left once again and a little behind. Then the shadow of the tree must come out in this position here. And there's the shadow of the foliage covering over the duck pond as well. Each of the fence posts will cast a shadow in these positions here. The house itself will cast a shadow in this position here. This edge of the house will be dark. Edge of the trees will be dark as well. So by adding shadow to your drawings, you can make them look a little more realistic. I want you to do two things this week. One, every object you look at, see if you can find shadows as well. Two, make a drawing, simple as you like, and add shadows to it.